14th of November 1854, two watercolour paintings were exhibited at the Exhibition of Natural and Industrial Products of New South Wales, held at the Australian Museum. The purpose of this local exhibition was a preliminary display of examples of what were termed extensive and varied natural and industrial resources of the colony in preparation for New South Wales' participation at the 1855 Exposition Universelle in Paris the next year. The first painting by a local artist, Frederick Terry, depicted the site of the tomb of Father Reserveur, a naturalist and chaplain with the French expedition led by La Perouse that was moored in Botany Bay in 1788. While the second painting by George Angus recorded the grave site of Thomas Wall, a naturalist with Edmund Kennedy's expedition in 1848 and who was buried on the remote Albany Island near Cape York. Both of these expeditions ultimately ended in tragedy. Father Reservoir died in, Bo in Botany Bay in 1788 from injuries he received in Samoa while La Perouse was en route to Botany Bay, while Thomas Wall died in northern Queensland from the results of extreme deprivation during the journey north. Both Reservoir and Wall were explorers, dying as members of an exploring expedition. Explorers and, and exploration are vivid and dramatic aspects of Australia's colonial history. Exploration was essential for the survival of the early colony, needing to find fresh water supplies, land for crops and for pasture for sheep and cattle. Exploration involved physical endurance and mental courage, battling against the extreme conditions they often encountered heat and cold, exhaustion, lack of food, thirst, despair and other hardships. Explorers have found an enduring place in Australian history through narratives of their expeditions and in memorials to them, regardless of whether the expedition was successful or not, acknowledging the sacrifice and high cost of colonial progress. Outwardly, the two paintings associated with the tragic death of these two young men appeared to strike a discordant note at the 1854 Sydney Exhibition, which was intended to celebrate colonial progress and prosperity, namely the bountiful resources of Australia in 1854, both natural and manufactured. The Sydney ex Exhibition was all about progress, yet the subject of both paintings were grave sites. This paper briefly discusses the images, the connection to well-known explorers, the people connected with them and their juxtaposition to each other, and considers how the watercolours accord with the exhibition's theme when considered within the text of the sacrifice and effort of explorers for the sake of colonial progress. The backdrop to the paintings was the 1854 Sydney exhibition, which was held in the new Australian Museum in College Street, not yet open to the public. Entitled The Exhibition of the Natural and Industrial Products of New South Wales, it was organised in anticipation of the Universal Exposition in Paris the following year and modelled on first of a series of international exhibitions, the Great Ex Exhibition held in London in 1851. The Sydney Exhibition displayed exhibits of both natural and industrial products of the colony against a backdrop of symbols of colonial refinement, the classical sculptures donated to the museum by Sir Charles Nicholson. While many of the exhibits were intended for display at the Paris Exhibition the following year, others ineligible under Paris's criteria for entry were also accepted by the organisers in order to present a broader selection of local products. Now the first painting to be discussed today, um, the painting called View of Botany Bay by Frederick Terry depicts the tomb of Father Reservoir with an engraved stump alongside. Visually, the tomb is the apparent subject of the painting. However, the tree stump stands prominently adjacent and casting upon it a shadow. The painting was commissioned before the tree stump was cut down, approval for which was given by Simeon Pierce, Commissioner of Crown Lands, but later the first mayor of Ramford. The tree, which, was, which by 1854, when it was cut down, was no longer in a good condition. It was originally situated in the present-day suburb of La Perouse, Botany Bay, next to the grave of Father Reservoir, a naturalist and chaplain with um, La Perouse's expedition, uh, and buried there in 1788. Father Reservoir was wounded during hostilities in Samoa when the French fleet stopped en route to Botany Bay. And although the injury is considered to be very trifling, three weeks later, Father Reservoir died. The first Catholic priest and scientist, naturalist, to be buried in Australia. 
The stump was later inscribed with an epitaph by crew members of a French ship visiting Sydney in 1824 who were searching for La Perouse. Its removal was ordered by the New South Wales Exhibition Commissioners for the preliminary display in Sydney in 1854, as they considered it symbolised the relationship between the colony and France, which justified its removal and inclusion as an exhibit in the Paris International Exhibition the next year. This connection stemmed from the idea of Father Reservoir being the first European buried in the colony, a story mythologised over time by colonial writers and poets. Also, the stump was a tangible artefact dating from the colony's early history at a point where it intersected with that of France, and it was valued for this association at the time of the upcoming 1855 exhibition because Britain and France were, by this time, fighting together against a common adversary in the Crimea. The second painting was exhibited by William Sheridan Wall. At the time, um, he was the curator of the Australian Museum and the painting was entitled Grave of Thomas Boyd Esquire. Uh, it painted by George Angus. Its full title was in fact Grave of Messrs Wall and Niblett, Companions of Mr Kennedy. It depicted the grave site of Thomas Wall and Charles Niblett, two of 12 men who accompanied Edmund Kennedy on his third expedition in 1848 from Rockingham Bay in northern Queensland, northward to Albany Island off Cape York. Thomas Wall, the expedition's naturalist, and Charles Niblett, its storekeeper, both died on the same day, 28 December 1848, seven <coughs> months into a journey through heavy terrain bordered by mangrove swamp, swamps and mountains. Uh, the journey was fraught with illness, shortage of food, and, extreme, and they suffered extreme fatigue. The two men were buried 80 yards from the camp, side by side, and owing to the extreme weakness of their companions, it was in a shallow grave covered only by a few small branches. Five months later, Jackie Jackie, one of the three survivors, acted as a guide on board the brig Freak, sent to locate the papers and remains from the expedition. Most of Wall and Niblett's bones were found, and in May 1849, um, a coffin with their remains was interred on the southern end, end of Albany Island, on the highest hill, described as a, at a clear open place uh, and a funeral service was held, at which Jackie Jackie was overcome with emotion. When Captain Simpson returned to Albany Island 18 months later, the site was as it had been left, the chief of the local tribe having forbidden his people to go near the grave. There was public reaction to the removal of the stump. Uh, for at least one colonist, the importance of the stump and Father Reservoir extended beyond their link to La Perouse to an association considered more significant the tangible connection with the early history of the colony. Mr R. A. Stace was not in favour of chopping down the engraved tree at the site where Father Reservoir was buried or sending it to Paris. His letter to the editor of the Sydney Morning Herald voiced dismay at the prospect of the stump leaving the, the colony. Uh, this was a reaction to a report five days earlier in the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, one of its regular progress reports on the preparations for the Paris exhibition. And that's what uh, they actually said. In French, perhaps one of the most interesting and unique contributions, gratifying to the French to find that a monument so frail had been preserved with almost sacred regard through so many years out of respect for the intelligence and enterprise of a member of their own nation. This was an extraordinary statement given that the stump had been almost forgotten and only recently brought to the attention of the commissioners for the Paris exhibition who deplored the poor state of the engraved memorial. Mr Stace declared that in his opinion, the stump of the tree was far more interesting than most of the objects in the Sydney Museum, being one of the oldest artefacts from the early days of the colony. Uh, he considered it was not right to deprive later generations access to what he called an ancient object. Interestingly, he questioned whether the Commissioner of Crown Lands had overstepped his authority by giving permission for the stump's removal, when in his opinion the object rightfully belonged to the colony. In spite of this, Mr Stace conceded that if the stump must be removed and sent away from the colony, then perhaps it and the other objects could be avail available to view before being sent away to Europe. A reply to the letter three days later by, from Simeon Pearce, the Commissioner of Crown Lands in question, acknowledged that he may have exceeded his duty, but he thought most colonists would likely agree with the decision, adding that although the stump was on colonial soil, it was the action of the French engraving the epitaph that made it an object of value. 
To make amends for the perceived wrongdoing, Pierce declared the stump would be exhibited in Sydney before it was being sent away. And in support of his action, Pierce noted that the, the benefit to all the colony from the long-term preservation of the stump, when placed in the Paris Library's museum after the exhibition, adding a reminder that an engraving of Father Reservoir's epitaph on a stone tomb remained in the colony and was a more permanent record of this historical event. Of course, the removal of the stump and its being sent to Par the Paris Museum has ensured its survival and longevity. And we certainly have Pierce's foresight to thank for that, although I can't help but admire Mr Stace's concerns for future generations, his intuitive awareness of the value of the past. Moreover, local artist Frederick Terry was commissioned to paint a watercolour of the intact gravesite before the tree stump was removed, which was exhibited alongside the stump in Sydney and later uh, exhibited in Paris. The motif of the, of the heroic explorer and the exploring expedition was a familiar one to columnists in 1854. Thomas Livingston Mitchell uh, published his journals in 1838 as an epic narrative described as one of the, the central texts of Australian colonial culture. It expressed the exploring expedition in terms of its philosophical significance. The journey of newly <coughs> colonised land symbolised the journey of human progress. Edmund Kennedy, second in charge to uh, Mitchell in 1845, died on that ill-fated 1848 expedition, and he's honoured with a memorial tablet to the late lamented assistant surveyor only one year later. Ludwig Leichhardt's disappearance in 1848 was still being strongly reported on in 1854 and beyond. While George Bennett's 1834 journal of a, nat of a naturalist recorded details of Father Reservoir's gravesite and his 1860 gatherings of the naturalist provided the lengthy tale of William Sheridan Wall's hunt for a sperm whale carcass back in 1849. And also the great explorer, we can't forget, Captain James Cook, who had a towering presence at the 1854 exhibition in the shape of a gigantic statue. The paintings um, were characterised by a number of aspects that valorised their inclusion in the 1854 Sydney exhibition. Uh, I'll just briefly touch on those. Uh, the subjects were uh, died young, Father Reservoir was 30 years of age and Thomas Wall 27, so both relatively young. They were both members of um, ill-fated expeditions. La Perouse's expedition left Botany Bay in March 1788 and was never seen again. All members lost. Edmund Kennedy's expedition failed to complete its journey th uh, with three survivors of the 12. Great hardship, endurance and then sacrifice. Both expeditions were ill-fated, uh, evoking an emotional, an, an emotional response. This was also present in the imaginative and romantic literary narratives taken up by writers celebrating the heroic saga of exploration and discovery following on from Thomas Mitchell's seminal journals. The subjects were linked to well-known, <coughs> revered explorers. They were both uh, linked to La Perouse and to Edmund Kennedy, uh, for whom there were no memorials um, and no physical remains. They were the, both of the paintings were positioned prominently in the catalogue and also at the 1854 exhibition. Uh, the Frederick Terry painting, there was an inclusion of uh, notes from George Bennett's um, book, uh, Wanderings in New South Wales in 1834, and that provided a kind of provenance for the stump. And also Frederick Terry's painting was linked to the early days of the colony, whereas the, uh, the other painting of uh, the Thomas Wall gravesite was typical of the new breed of immigrants that arrived in the colony in the 1840s. The subjects were also seen as men of science. They were both naturalists. Um, so educated or at least skilled in a scientific and natural world capacity, seen as men of science by the wider community. During the short time that Father Reservoir spent in Sydney, he made an impression on colonial society. He was mentioned in the historic records of New South Wales, uh, advising Governor Philip, who was writing of the potential for Sydney clays as a basis for, for a pottery industry, that the white clay of the Aboriginals used to paint themselves was suitable for making good china. Thomas Wall, when he arrived in the colony, he uh, was recorded as being a bird stuffer, but by 1849, the memorial tablet to the Edmund Kennedy expedition recorded him as a naturalist. Another aspect of the 
paintings is that they were graves and not memorials. Uh, while no physical remains were found of La Perouse and Edmund Kennedy, leaving only memorials to them. Wall and Reservoir, however, had final resting places, graves with their remains. And also there was a, a link to France as well. There was also a desire of the colonists to make France aware that they looked after an important relic with a revered French explorer. Uh, France was now an ally of England. Now finally, on uh, final word on Father Reservoir and Thomas Wall, two explorers separated by 60 years, their memory brought together in the 1854 Sydney exhibition through the medium of the two paintings. Each of these young men died in the service of exploration, Father Reservoir the priest and a naturalist arrived in the colony wounded, dying within three weeks. Thomas Wall died during an expedition through the rugged, rugged ter terrain of Northern Queensland. As to the juxtaposition of Reservoir <coughs> and Wall, uh, given the 60 year distance between them, I feel it's a continuing triumph of nature over man, involving conflict and struggle, hardship and sacrifice, that remained elements of colonial exploration in this period, whether on a global or a colonial level, and necessary for, pro for progress. Uh, for us, it was advancement of the colony. Also, that the constant struggle to explore was no less dangerous in the 19th century than it was in the 18th century. Australia was still a pioneer. From this brief discussion that I've had of the paintings, I consider the paintings were not incongruous at the exhibition. They presented an image that the colonists were proud of, images that defined the colony's struggles and sacrifice to reach where they are now, where they were now in 1854, at a point of prosperity with hope for the future. A last brief word on the, the current locations of the stump and the two paintings. The stump was taken to Paris in 1855 by William MacArthur and exhibited at the 1854 Paris exhibition and afterward donated to the La Perouse Museum then housed at the Louvre in Paris. In 1988, the stump, along with a collection of objects from the La Perouse expedition, returned to Australia on long-term loan as part of France's gift to the Australian people for the bicentennial and it was presented to the La Perouse Museum of Botany Bay. It remained there for 20 years until in 2008, the stump returned to Paris for inclusion in an exhibition held at the Musée de la Marine, it remains there. The painting view of Botany Bay is also currently in the Musée de, de la Marine, Paris. The painting of Thomas Wall's grave is part of the National, Libraries, uh, National Library of Australia's Angus Collection, um, a collection of uh, works by um, George Angus. And lastly, I'll just mention what I would call a quirk of fate concerning uh, Frederick Terry's view of Botany Bay and the Musée de la Marine in Paris. When I contacted them for details of the stump and the painting, they sent me a copy of their files, which record the artist of this work as Francis Ferry, not Frederick Terry. So I'll just leave you with that to ponder. Thank you. Thank you. Father Reservoir's bones were buried sort of near the tree. That's originally what happened. And there was like a little metal sort of thing popped onto the, the tree. But that was taken down several times. And then in 1824, the, um, there was a, another expedition from France came out looking for La Perouse and they engraved the tree with a, an engraving which is just barely visible. It is there. Mm -hmm. And um, it more or less says, um, um, near this tree lie the, the, the remains of Father Reservoir. As to that remains there, that was, that the tomb was, um, the money for the tomb was provided by uh, de Bougainville who came out here later. He sort of got things moving and um, they, they built the actual tomb. They, got, they found bones, so there are, it is actually a grave um, with the bones of Father Reservoir. The memorial column, that's the difference between the two of them. The, 
column is um, just a memorial. That is supposed to be the last spot from where they received um, communication by La Perouse. So that, that's, that's actually a grave site and it's currently still there. Yeah. Well, there's actually a um, well, there's a museum there as well. Right. well. Thank you for that paper. Just a question, a factual question about the, the Angus picture. Oh. It's actually a wood engraving, isn't it, rather than it, a painting? It is. It um, was. Was yes. the engraving exhibited, or was the original painting exhibited? The, the original, yeah, the, yes. I should have made that clear. The uh, the exhibit was the painting. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, a, a, I was not able to, um, I suppose I'd have to go to the library to, to view the actual painting. But uh, this, as you rightly said, this is an engraving of the painting. Originally it was a sketch. So it started out as a sketch by a captain of the rattlesnake who picked up Jackie Jackie. And they, he made the sketch to record the grave site. And then later on George Angus did a painting of that. That was exhibited at the exhibition. And then this engraving was made for the, the picture to be included in a book mm -hmm. called the Picture Pleasure Book of Australia that was published in 1857. So yes, that's actually yes, an engraving. I obviously work on Angus myself, and yeah. many of his um, images ended up as wood engravings. Yes. And, um, yeah. I think with Angus, people know him best through the engravings rather than through the original paintings, yeah. which were often Thank you. It's rather ironic actually because uh, William Sheridan Wall fell out with George Angus who he was later, he worked in the museum as well. He sort of usurped William Sheridan Wall's position in the uh, museum and he fell out with Angus and yet Angus was uh, provided a painting for his beloved brother. Oh, he's very well known. Oh, yes. Any other questions, Kate? Was there much, how were they contextualised for people who were coming to see them? Was there much of a description about what they meant or was it just the painting? Not the, the Angus painting wasn't contextualised as such, it was just a painting. The Frederick Terry painting was um, exhibited along with the stump. So, and plus there was the, that they provided the um, description by George Bennett that had he, that he had written in the 1830s as sort of, as I said, it's sort of like a, a bit of a provenance really, I suppose. So I think the, the, the Frederick Ter Terry painting was considered, I suppose, to be a little bit more important in terms of the fact that there was this link with France, which they wanted to, and there was a, an article in the paper about the fact that how important it was for the colony to exhibit in Paris to assist keeping the peace uh, between England and France at the time. It was, um, it must have been a little bit um, fragile, I suppose. So, so the link with France and the fact that we had this relic, which it was a relic of their revered explorer, that made it far more prominent in, in terms of the exhibition, really than the Angus one. Uh, the Angus painting, for me, is a much more personal response. Uh, there's, it's, there's a lot more pathos in it, the fact that his brother exhibited uh, the painting as well, and it was far more recent. Any last questions? Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just getting into <coughs> the podcast. As a former French teacher, which was my career, Francis would never have a sea sitting a Sevilla on the sea before an eye. So which one are we talking about? Uh, the spelling of Francis Thierry. Oh, that, yeah. Well, that's actually, that, that, that is um, the file that came to me from Paris. Right. Yes, so it's surprising that French it's, would make that. That is what I received. It is a grammatical error. Yeah, you it's know, on their it's part. It's creates a soft C before yeah. an A early in not an I. Sure, yes, yes of, course, of course, of course, yeah. Have its own grammatical problems. I have to say that. I really don't have that much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to touch on it, but it's the last in a, a list of things that went wrong for poor old Frederick Terry. <coughs> it was not acknowledged 
any time he was due to get some sort of acknowledgement, it went wrong or it went to some, it was his, the painting in the press, the only time it was reported, it was acknowledged as being painted by um, George Angus. It just went on and on <coughs> all by. Last questions? Well, if not, please join me in thanking Judith for a terrific paper.